you ever wondered why it's really hard to paint from the actual object itself rather than a photograph of that image? Well, today we're going to find some top tips on how to make painting a little bit easier. Coming up. Hi again there guys, Emma here from Paint and Pino giving you some top tips for all things art and design. And today we're going to look at the difference between painting a first hand observational drawing or painting, which is where you paint from the actual thing, whether that be a still life drawing, or whether you're actually going out to the location to paint itself there and then, or painting from second hand observational drawing, which is where you paint from an actual photograph. If you hang around to the end of the video today guys, then I'm going to show you some top tips, particularly when it comes to painting from a photograph and how it can really help with your colour mixing technique. So first things first, secondhand observational drawing or painting, that is most people's preferred choice of producing a piece of artwork because it's a lot easier for your eye to look at a two-dimensional object rather than going to the actual object itself because obviously we look at things in 3D. That is why a lot of artists, when you see them outside painting, tend to do this with their one eye closed because actually if you shut one eye, it makes your image 2D. So in terms of getting perspective, it's an awful lot easier to do that painting looking at it in 2D than it is looking at that in 3D. So the first thing, looking at a secondhand observational image. This is a photograph that I took earlier when I went down to go look at the beautiful sunset just down the road. So we go from secondhand observation from this. to this, this being first-hand observation where you come to the actual location. Of course, the advantage to that, if you can hear me over the waves, is that you take in the ambience, you get the atmosphere. Ideally, I'd actually bring a, uh, an easel and a canvas down to this location so I could paint the sunset as I'm watching it. But I actually find I prefer to bring my camera. So you can see I've just got it set up down here. So I can actually capture the moment, take in the atmosphere, enjoy it and then I get back to the studio and I'll take some paintings from the images that I've got from my camera. So now we're back in the studio, obviously you've got an idea of how you, you can't replicate actually being in the environment itself, so if it's possible for you to get outside to take your camera, just to take in the ambience, it really, really does make a massive difference. I used to be a photogenic artist, so I'd try and recreate um, a painting identically to the photograph or to the image, but as I've sort of evolved my style, I've become a little bit more, I guess, impressionistic, where you want to really just get a feel of what the atmosphere was like when you want to get that sense of movement and I find it a lot more of a lucid way of painting as well. So again it depends on your technique, it depends on your approach but some people prefer just to draw from actual images and especially when you're starting out it's really good just to kind of practice those moments as well but I just think in terms of getting inspiration if you can get a camera just get outside it really really does help. I'll actually leave a link below um, of a video which gives you ideas on how to get inspiration for different types of paintings. All right then, so for this painting here, this is the photograph which I've come out with in the end. What I've actually done to this, I've, I've put it into a laminator. So you've got that plastic sheen. The reason being is that when I actually paint onto this, you can just wipe it off so you don't actually affect your photograph. Um, you know, because it's quite expensive to print these out in full colors, particularly on A4 at this size. So I can reuse this time and time again. So as for the top tip to do your colour mixing, basically you're going to take your image, so you can see the image just here. The beauty is then is that we can literally mix the colour onto this painting itself and it will save you significant time. So I've just got my orange and yellow here. I'll also leave a link below to a video um, where I show you how to mix your colours. Um, a lot of people mix their colours 
onto a huge area and then you might lose that colour and you find it difficult to get back to the colour that you've actually chosen originally. I'm just going to add a little bit more yellow into here. But this is another quite great way of actually mixing your colour because of course you can work it into the plastic without it drying. Acrylic doesn't really dry on plastic, you can just peel it off at the end of the day or wipe it off later. But you get a much easier sense of how quickly you can really match those colours up um, when you're working onto the photograph itself. So once you're happy with the colour that you've got, you would then literally transfer that onto your canvas and you can create your painting pretty quickly and pretty effectively. Alrighty guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's top tips on learning the difference between first-hand and second-hand observational drawings and paintings and why it's so much easier to paint from an actual photograph itself and obviously to actually mix the paint onto that photograph. If you have enjoyed today's video then guys, please do hit that like button just below as it really does help our channel. And if you'd like to see some more top tips, we do upload regular weekly videos, so hit that subscription button just below where you're gonna get some regular top tips. Alrighty guys, we'll see you next time. Happy painting.